Rocky, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. Pop! See? <laughs> Nothing up my sleeve. Presto! <laughs> Wrong hat. And now it's time to meet Mr. Peabody. <laughs> Ah yes, Peabody's Improbable History, that classic Rocky and Bullwinkle sketch that was best known for making history fun. You mean making fun of history! Ow. Quiet, Otto! So I'm sure that we all collectively groaned when we heard that there was going to be a theatrical film based on that cartoon, considering how well the other theatrical adaptations of cartoons that we or our parents grew up on turned out. So does Mr. Peabody and Sherman break the chain? Or is this film's time up? Let's take a look and find out. This is short and to the point, and I review movies in five minutes or less, or your money back. And since Megan is currently on vacation, it is once again up to me to start the review. So let's begin. Now we all know the typical format for an episode of Peabody's Improbable History. Peabody and Sherman go back in time, they meet somebody famous, the person isn't doing what they are famous for, Peabody and Sherman fix it, Peabody makes the joke, and cartoon. Mr. Peabody and Sherman more or less starts the same way, only once the adventure is over, Mr. Peabody reminds Sherman that he starts school the very next day. Yes, Mr. Peabody and Sherman explores our hero's daily lives once the show is over, and as such, their personalities are a tad different. First, we have Sherman, who was voiced by Max Charles. Sherman is still unfazed by the life-threatening adventures he and Mr. Peabody go on, but he also, in this movie, acts more like a kid his age would be expected to. It's seven and a half. And the fact that Max Charles is ten also makes Sherman more believable as a kid, more or less. Thus, we get some humor out of Sherman sometimes misbehaving or his inability to follow Mr. Peabody's every move. Then again, nobody can follow Mr. Peabody's every move. He is still that same super genius with the credentials that would make Oprah jealous, and he is voiced by Ty Burrell. Now, at first, I did not think I was going to like Ty Burrell's voice because I thought there was too much emotion behind the performance in comparison to the original voice actor, Bill Scott. But as it turns out, not only was Ty Burrell able to actually match Bill Scott's quick pace to line delivery, but the emotion behind his performance actually makes sense in the context of the story. You see, Mr. Peabody is a talking dog living in a human world because... Because it's a cartoon, that's why. And at first, no one seems to care about that. But when he decides to adopt Sherman, then it becomes a problem. Well, actually, the reason it really becomes a problem is because when Sherman is teased by a girl named Penny at a school about the fact that he's being raised by a dog, Sherman bites her. And then child services is called in, they blame Peabody for Sherman biting the girl, and they threaten to take Sherman away from him. So Mr. Peabody invites Penny and her parents over for dinner to work things out and show the child services woman that he's a good father. Penny comes across as your typical tyrannical schoolgirl, but Ariel Winter manages to make her a lot of fun, and her relationship with Sherman is actually pretty cute, though not sickeningly sweet, thank goodness. Anyway, one thing leads to another, and our heroes go on an adventure in the Wayback Machine. That's W-A-B-A-C, not W-A-Y-B-A-C-K, as I thought when I was growing up. <laughs> from that point on, most of the movie's humor comes from how exaggerated history is, and Peabody's implausible problem-solving skills. However, what I liked most about this movie was Peabody and Sherman's relationship. 
There is some legitimate drama to be had with their living arrangement, and Peabody actually doubting his ability to be a good father is made all the more emotional because of his backstory, though I won't spoil that for you. This is probably the last thing you would expect from a movie based on a 5 minute cartoon where the joke was that the human was owned by the dog. Add some colorful animation, some good scenes of action, and you've got a recipe for a pretty good film. That being said, I did have some issues with Mr. Peabody and Sherman. One, the climax is a little small in scale. It's not that it's bad, it's just that you would expect more time to be devoted to it is all. However, the climax is still satisfying, and the event that kicks it off is a clever take on a typical cliché, which I won't spoil either. And then there is the movie's humor. Some of it falls flat, such as Mr. Peabody's tendency to make bad puns. Now, I know he made bad puns in the original show, but in this movie, the puns are just, well, they happen way too often in my opinion. And sure, there is one good legitimately funny bad pun, but you would expect that to be the climax of the joke. It just keeps going on and it gets a little old is all I'm saying. And also, I don't know why, but for some reason, this just doesn't feel like a movie that I'm going to run back to the theater and see over and over and over again. That being said, I do think that this is a movie that you should see in theaters. It's a semi-serious take on a gimmick premise, but it doesn't lose the source material's humor or style, and even if you never watched the original show, I still say that this movie is worth a look. I give it 8 time travel paradoxes out of a possible 10. This has been shortened to the point, and I review movies in 5 minutes or less, or your money back. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go ahead and give my vacationing sister a call and see how she's doing because, well, you know, there is no time like the present. See ya.